Just touch it like that, and then it goes. And only 21 minutes, right? Yeah, well, we can only do it. We have to do them less than 15. <coughs> so um, we'll just go through these problems one by one. Uh, this one seems good enough for me. Um, the, so this one is Boyle's Law. So if you want to memorize a bunch of formulas, like I say, this is a good one to memorize. Boyle's Law is um, VI, here, let's do this one. VI or V1, I and 1 are the same. I is initial 1, 1 and 2 I use, but um, I think the book uses I and F. But V1, P1 equals V2, P2, okay? And remember I taught, taught you guys that you can use that ideal gas law um, to get any of these laws, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's just do that really quick. So remember, PV equals NRT, and divide that by PV equals NRT. But this top one's gonna be one, 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 R is constant, T, one, 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 R is constant. So since R is constant, we can already cancel that out, right? Um, and then we're gonna look at the problem. So the problem says, gas occupies 10 liters at one ATM of pressure. So V1 is 10 liters, right? Is everybody cool with that? Or 10.0 liters, I guess I should say. And P1, is 1.00 ATM. So, um, it asks, if you double the pressure to 2 ATM, so P2 is going to be 2.0, it says 2.0 ATM, let's give it 2.00, let's do uh, 3 secrets ATM like that. What is the new volume? Okay. So that's all you got to do. Okay, so now we want to go look over here again, and we have to ask ourselves, did P change in this problem, guys? Yes. yes. Yeah. So we got to leave that one there. Oh, sorry, these should be two down here. You guys can tell me. Okay, so P changed, right? Did V change? V1 to V2. We're looking for V2, right? So, did it change? Yeah, yeah it changed, right? Because if, if it didn't change, then the problem would be easy, right? You just put 10 liters on it. Uh, that would be an easy chemistry class. We should do that one instead, right? So let's ask this question again. Did V change? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we can't cancel that out, right? Because they're not the same number. Did the number of moles change? Did we add gas or take gas away from this problem? No, right? So the number of moles stayed the same. So if the number of moles was two, right, we take two divided by two, what does that do? It cancels that out, right? So N1 equals N2 effectively, so they cancel out. Okay. Did the temperature change in this problem? So T1 equals T2, is everybody cool with that? So since T1 equals T2, we can cancel that out, right? So what does this um, equation break down to? It actually is P1, V1 divided by P2, V2 equals 1, right? Everybody cool with that? And then, if we want to, we can make it look like this, right? But we don't even have to do that, because all we want to do is look for V2, right? So this is the way I like to do problems, because I only have to memorize one thing, right? Uh, this one, P, V equals N, R, T. But there's a lot of chemistry students that insist they have to memorize so many things, okay? So if you like to memorize things, you can memorize Boyle's Law, some guy who's long since dead, so um, maybe he'll be proud of you, I don't know if you memorized it or whatever. But I think it's easy to just break it down like this, okay? So let's what are we looking for? We're looking for V2, right? So, where is that? It's down here, right? So let's just take that equation that we got, P1, V1, over P2, V2, equals 1, right? 
So we could do a couple of things. I think the easiest thing to do is just flip both of the sides over. Okay? If I flip this over, what do I get? I get P2V2, right? Is everybody cool with that? And what's on the bottom? P1V1, right? What if I flip the other side over? What do I get? Just one. Because this is really one over one, right? Okay? And then what I can do is multiply like that, right? So multiply both sides by P1V1. I'm going to erase this one. P1V1, right? And that's going to cancel that out with that. And what's my new equation? P2V2 equals P1V1, and then divide both sides by P2. And then I get this equation, right? V2 equals P1V1 over P2. Is that cool? No, no, we're not done yet. We gotta solve the problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, what's P1, guys? One ATM or one point oh oh, I guess. You all saw that, huh? What's V1? Ten point zero liters, right? Divided by P2. What's that? Two point oh oh ATM. Are there any units that we can cancel out here? ATM, yeah. ATM will cancel. So that'll leave us units of what? Liters. Liters. Is that a volume unit? Yes. So that's cool, right? So that's what we're looking for. So all we got to do is if you can't do this calculation in your head, right, take your calculator. And if you can't, it's all right. We all got a calculator, OK? So let's do it with our calculators. 1 times 10 divided by 2. So what do you get? What's 5, is that it? 5.00, right? So we can do 6. Is everybody cool with that one? Are there any questions on that one? So this is going to be exactly like the problems on your test. Okay. So again, like for me, it's easy to do it this way. Okay. Again, if you want to memorize all these formulas, we'll go through a bunch of them. Okay. But you only really have to memorize one thing. Can I kill it? Any question? Okay. Why did you flip it? Uh, because I wanted to do get V2 on the top. So um, where before V2 was on the bottom. We'll do another one. Okay. You can still do it. Yeah, you can, well, I mean, you got to isolate the variable. So, right? So, if I, if I was using this one, I'd have to divide both sides by P2, right? To isolate that variable V2. We'll do another one. Okay, let's do another one. So, kill it. 